happen relatively quick. Uh, here we go. They look like golden noodles. Finally shed this mucus. I'll tell you what happened. Dude, I was not gonna film today uh, because I was just doing some maintenance on the skimmer. I took it apart, cleaned it. And now I looked up, I noticed the clam looks a little bit off. It looks like the clam is done. Um, the fact that I can look into it, I see the skin kind of shriveled up. That's not good. What is going on? At first I thought it's odd. Is that because all the little estrious stars climb under the glass? I'm like, what's going on? I don't have a uh, holocron shrimp. So I took a closer look to the tank. I look at all the corals. Corals seem perfectly fine. And based on the test, temperature, everything, they seem completely normal. And then this happened. I look down here, I'm like, uh-oh, that's no good. Man, if this clam is on his way out, I am gutted. This is the Peco clam I picked up. Was it back in 2018 or 2019 from Peco for 50 bucks? This is kind of like my pride and joy of this tank. I really hope that this is just kind of like temporary, just kind of pissed off at something. But no, I'm looking in it. It looks like the, uh, the flesh is really receded within the shell. I think it's a goner. What the hell? What happened? I don't understand. Six hours later. Well, guys, I think, uh, sadly, I think that's it. That's it for the clam. Really, really upsetting. And it's really strange. I actually don't know what happened. Like, there's no rhyme or reason. As you can see, all the other corals are doing beautifully. All the livestock are doing fantastic. Um, it just one day I wake up and that's it. And looking back at the video, I actually did a full tank uh, kind of like really quick update with my phone on Instagram. And I did see that the clam was not fully extended as it normally is. But then again, I mean, the menthol is not pinched per se. It's, uh, it's kind of to the margin, to the edge of the shell. And um, I don't know, man, sometimes I think I mean, it's kind of it kind of sucks to say, but sometimes it just happens. Uh, something got to be out of whack, and I did not notice until now. Um, the clam, I guess, I guess the clam just kind of hung on until now. Um, but yeah, just dude, it just uh, it's just upsetting. It's really, really upsetting because I've had this clam for what two and a half years at this point. It kept always pulled through with through the uh, elk swing, the uh, nutrient spike, and just when things are uh, going well for the tank, and boom, this happened. But uh, I guess I'm just gonna wait for the fat lady to sing in the form of cleanup crew coming in and polishing this clam off. Oh man, this sucks, dude. Uh -oh. What is going on? <laughs> we got a little new guest at home. Oh man. Who's this little fella? Just kind of remind me, I always wanted to have a, uh, when I have a kid, to have a dog as well. I guess they're growing up together. I, this just kind of struck me. At one point I wanted that. So here we go. Mom, what's his name? Have you? Boy. Uh, Booby? No. Booby? Booby? What do you think, Leon? <laughs> he likes Booby. The next day. All right, while the sun is sleeping here, I'm gonna address the clam. Yep, absolutely a goner. I see the uh, Tonga Super Nisarius now in there feasting. I'm gonna leave the clam in there a little bit longer so the cleanup crew can snack a little bit. Nothing goes to waste in this tank. But one thing I do wanna check if I can see any pests underneath the uh, clam shell. One tiny Bristol worm. Nothing really telltale. One Bermanda snail, those are the ones that send out webbing that may irritate corals, but nothing crazy. One interesting thing uh, Daniel from New York pointed out that I noticed as well is that I do not see any uh, white grow ring around the shell recently. Uh, usually in a very healthy clam, you get that, you get that white ring but we don't see it here. So maybe the clam has been in trouble for a little bit. I'm gonna leave the clam here a little bit for the cleanup crew to um, feed on it a little bit. I'm scratching my head on what happened, but one tip that Richard kind of dropped uh, last night was if my clam seems a little bit off, I, can, I could potentially blast with some like fresh water, fresh like LDI water or even like a fresh water dip. Apparently that helps clam. So that's, um, that's information I'm gonna take in my back pocket for the next time that I'll try clam, which I'm sure is not gonna be too far away because I really love clams. And uh, that's also one of the reasons I'm not keeping copper band butterfly, at least not yet, because I really wanna uh, keep clams, not just one, but multiple clams in this tank. Got this, I think it's from the 2018 
Reef Palooza in New Jersey. This clam has been with me for a hot minute. I see one little Bristol worm, that's to be expected. All right, in terms of growth on the shell, we still see some white margin here, so the clam was growing. Uh, not so much on this side, um, but of course I would like to see more white on the edge of the clam, uh, indicating that it's growing healthily. So I don't know, I think like whatever happened, happened relatively quick, because last week I do remember the clam extending its mantle pretty fully. So something, something this week, I think. It's really odd, I'm scratching my head. I have two guesses, but the speculations right now, um, kind of hard to confirm. So I will kind of reserve those speculations and we'll revisit in a future date. But for now, sorry clam. Three days later. All right, gentlemen, on to a happier part of this vlog. I have just received a box of corals. Joker Corals is a store that is located in New York. They do a lot of online sales as well. This is the second round that I received corals from them. If the first round is any indication, the second round should be just as good. But let's go ahead and see what's in the box. Sticker number two of Joker Coral. Here we go. All right, take that back. Make that sticker three, four, and five. The pack's actually still really warm. Uh, then again, they're in New York and this package arrived uh, nice and early today in Maryland. And now the UV glasses from Choco Coral. Uh, let's see what we got going today. Woo. This is actually a surprise box from Joker's Corals uh, because they have a live sales coming this coming Saturday and they want to get the words out and send some corals so people can see like the uh, quality and health of the corals that they have. So I do not know what is in this box. I understand it's gonna be a mix of like Zoas, LPS, and uh, possibly SPS, so let's take a quick look. It's like a Zoa of some sorts, uh, JCC stands for Joker Corals, I believe, and Stardust is the name. So we're gonna go ahead and float all these guys first. Looks like we have a Rainbow Ganipora. Excellent, I've been trying to build the uh, Ganipora garden. Ultra Rainbow Hammer. Ozenk? Gani Zo, Gani? Gani Zio? Gani Zio? All right, I guess we'll find out what it is. Now I know Home Wrecker for SPS. I remember them being uh, pretty expensive. That's why it's called Home Wrecker. Uh, this is a new release. This scares me because again, SPS, uh, although the SPS I have is doing pretty decent. I'm a little nervous. May I have to turn to uh, my recent say Telegram. What is this guy right here? There's another SPS. It looks like decent size too. Last but not least, we got a tank grown NYK torch. Is it New York Knicks torch? I think I've heard of these named torch, but I've obviously never really <laughs> have the chance to have one because they're so pricey. Uh, really interested to see what it looks like. And this looks like a decent size one too, man. Whoa. Temperature acclimating the bags in the refugium. And in the meantime, I'm just gonna kind of like point my refrigerant light a little bit that way so these guys are kind of in the shade. I really want to make sure that these guys don't get burnt by uh, too intense of light, which, although I don't think this light is uh, too intense, but just in case, just in case I want to be extra safe. As much as I want to put these corals in right away, I'm going to temperature acclimate them first and I got to get back to work. Once I'm done working in a couple of hours, I'm going to drop them in the uh, low flow area of the tank, probably like right here or something. There's a little valley right there that doesn't get a lot of flow. Now that clam is actually uh, not there anymore, rest in peace. On the sand bed, I'm getting about, I think 70 or 80 parts at the moment, which is probably not much uh, based on where these guys are coming from. Several song filled hours later. All right, so tonight, because Neon is uh, not ready to go to sleep yet, we're down here just looking at the tank and here's a really quick sneak peek at the corals from Joker's Corals. For the life of me, I could not find any of my frag racks. So down to the sand they go. I left the uh, protective little plastic cup on purpose just so that nothing touches it. It does not tip over until I get a chance to glue them down. We got a really beautiful zoa right here. There's multiple polos and I can't wait to mount it so we can get a full view of it. And right behind it, we got a bicolor branching hammer. And then we got two really bright looking SPS back there. And also that is the rainbow Ganipora. That looks fantastic. Can't wait to see it. And then back there, there's a mushroom that's a little bit too far for me to see as well. We'll get a closer look once we uh, actually put them in the final place. Finally, we have this absolutely jaw dropper of a torch that I believe is the uh, New York Knicks torch. It looks absolutely gorgeous. I do need to move the uh, torch or the F-Pora a little bit just so that the F-Pora does not get stung. But look at that. There's a reason why people like Go Torch, huh? They look like Go to Noodles. Absolutely beautiful. Right, Leon? <laughs> Two days later. All right, guys, the corals has been in the tank for a couple days. Let's take a closer look to see what they look like when opened up. Slap on my trusty orange filter for my point and shoot camera. Here is how the overall tank look 
at this moment i'm filming this saturday night which means the day before i release this video and as always we'll start from the left side of the tank and move my way to the right side of the tank so we'll start from the very left side right smack in the middle is the ultra bicolor branching hammer that's a mouthful but that's a really really beautiful branching hammer down here is the branching hammer that i picked up a couple weeks ago locally and i am trying to turn this portion of the tank into somewhat of a kind of like a hammer garden here and as you can see right now there are a lot of green coloration there so i'm hoping to change that over time i need to find some lower lights liking coral to cover this area here but that is the ultra branching hammer from joker corals so sliding over here is what i thought was ganipora before but upon opening up the bag is actually a mushroom or redactus if i want to be fancy at first it's that kind of redactus but upon closer inspection even though it is not as bright at least at the moment it does seems to have some kind of bubble developed at the top right there it's kind of hard to see right now but i think like over the course of the next few days it's gonna inflate and then i'll get a better look at it i think this mushroom definitely has some potential because i do see a little more vibrant color already coming in i can't wait for that to happen and of course we got that little bounce factor as well that's happening up top moving from mushroom to the top of the tank we got one of the sps that one is bright and from what i can see of the polyp that's peeking out slowly it looks to be a chili red color polyp and i can not wait to see how it grows in this tank. So the other SPS I'm super excited about from this shipment is this guy right here in the center frame and that is a Home Wrecker Junior. It's a new release from Joker Corals. Unfortunately I made the mistake of mounting it almost directly pointing towards us so it's kind of hard to see. I'll try to sink down a little bit lower to kind of see it from a different angle. Nope did not help. All right, it's kind of hard to see from the side because half of it is covered but I'll try my best. Looks to be a purple body with a bright yellow tips. It's actually a beautiful coloration. I'm not sure if it's coming through uh, in the video because I'm all zoomed in. I kind of wish I mounted it differently. Maybe I'll kind of pull it off the rock and remount. I'm not sure. Um, it, although it does seem kind of happy there. Coming over here to the center of the tank, we got this nice little frag of rainbow Ganipora that they sent. They know that I'm building out a Ganipora garden, so they thought they'll send along this nice rainbow Gani. Some dude's really happy. Right? Along with the Ghani garden, I've also been trying to collect Zoas and build out a Zoa garden. And they know that as well because they sent along a really cool Zoa frag right here. It has a nice purple center with peach skirt. Really, really beautiful and unique. And I put it there because right next to it is actually the other Pally they sent in the last round. Also a really unique looking Pally as well. So this little cluster right here is from Joker Corals. Man, just look at the way these fat little golden noodles dance and the waves look absolutely beautiful. No wonder people love gold torch like this, right? And I believe this is the New York Knicks gold torch. The last two days, I have been slowly dialing the flow to make sure that the flow is not too strong and not too weak for this uh, fancy looking gold torch. And I think I probably got it done. And I feel like this flow is really good for the uh, frog spawn down here as well. It seems completely open and happy, not bothered by the flow at all. Same thing with the Ganipora down here. So right now I'm just using one single MP40. I actually took the other one offline because it was a little bit too rough for these Euphilias right here, or Benga Bengai Philia. I think that's a new name, right? So for right now, one single MP40 running at about 20, 22% uh, at Legumo seems to be working for whatever corals I have at the moment. And the return pump is a uh, vector M2 running at I think 50% right now going through two of these uh, random flow generator nozzles and so far this setup seems to be working with the corals I have in this tank down the road I would love to introduce some more additional flow maybe opposite end from the MP40 to create some chaotic flow I try the MP40 on the other side of the glass as well as they meet and bounce off is a little bit too rough for the corals in the back as well so I don't know like I did not think flow would be such a big issue to solve, but apparently it is when you have like fleshy corals that may tear. Uh, so I may look into possibly an MP10 or maybe I'll try one of the gyri pump. Try to find a way to mount it so that it does not create 
really harsh flow. Just like last time, Joker Coral once again brought some amazing, amazing, beautiful corals. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, they are having a live sale this coming Saturday. And to make their live sale more exciting, they have some amazing frags at 10 dollars and already there are some special deals to be had personally the biggest thing keeping me away from live sale is shipping costs but in this particular case for the most part the shipping is only 20 dollars so be sure to check out joker's coral's instagram account right here oh before we go we have to feed the fish first one second all right here we go some reef flakes right here I'm trying to see if i can lure out the malamilla blenny as well as the jawfish uh, those two guys are pretty cryptic surprisingly we got three of the four gobies let me see if the fourth goby will come out and yep that did it the fourth goby came out next up let's see if the mala blenny comes out oh there is the mala miller blenny although he is kind of chilling on the algae clip for whatever reason looks like a jawfish is no show today that's too bad but uh check out that jawbreaker mushroom it got huge uh in the span of maybe like two or three months for whatever reason it just decided to grow and grow i guess uh he really liked back there where the light is more dim and here is some of the uh, babies i split off that's one guy right there also one right there in the last 135 update i wanted to show you the uh green polyp toaster that i got and here it is after two weeks it finally shed its mucus and with the green polyp showing it's looking great it's really filling out this portion of the tank i feel like the uh, gsp and the green spot <laughs> why are you so happy what's going on yeah yeah Woo. <laughs> Also, look at the Aiken. Look at the Aiken. It's just so happy right here. It's nice, poofy, tentacles kind of out. And whenever I feed the tank, uh, whatever kind of food, the tentacle just like really, really reach out. And it's great. I love those kind of feeding response. Oh, there's the white lion goby. You guys see him? But it's still kind of far away. It's kind of hard to see. So at some point, I would love to get a close up shot for him. He's getting a lot more bold. So I think it's just a matter of time before we get a good shot of him. Actually, a lot of updates on all the corals growing in this tank. They've been doing really, really well. And some of the big surprise is actually the SPS. Some of the SPS is actually coloring up quite nicely. For the longest time they've been brown but now they've been colored up. I think a large part of this is from keeping the parameters uh, stable by using uh, calcwassers, the ATI Core Essential Pro and also dosing trace elements like the Reef Moonshiner uh, supplements right here. But again we'll do a proper update on what I'm dosing in a later video. For today I just want to give a quick update on the corals that I just received from Joker Corals. I think in the next video I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into the changes in this reef tank in the last two or three months a lot has changed and a lot of them has changed for the better i'll tell you what happened and what i think caused the positive outcome uh, with that said though i am gonna wrap up this video because it's time for me to play with leon uh, so hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did be sure to leave a like and i'll see you next sunday at 12 30 p.m sharp bye bye Right now we got a list of potential names for this little puppy right here. It's all written down. At least I think it is, unless she's uh, trying to pull a quick one.